Hey, what's going on people and welcome back to another video. The promised video that you guys were waiting for is ready finally and today we're going to take a look at every single secondary weapon in Battlefield 2042 and rank them based on their TTK. The result of this video, now that I'm looking at it, is quite shocking really and I'm pretty sure you guys would like to know why so definitely stay around until the end. The target distance here for this weapon class is anything below 30 meters, which is just the average range that people tend to use these weapons. We've got 12 secondary weapons, but I'm excluding the Super 500 because it's a shotgun and its TTK would be zero in that range since it's going to be a one-shot kill. So with that in mind, let's get straight into the fun stuff. So at number 10, we've got the M44 Magnum. Yeah, that was the first shock right there. A lot of people actually call the M44 one of the best secondary weapons in the game. But as you can see, when it comes to TTK, it's literally the worst possible weapon that you can play. And that's perfectly understandable because the M44 is just a slow hand cannon rather than a sidearm. The TTK is 984 milliseconds, which is just slow, guys. Let's face it. It hits hard. It's a one-shot headshot kill in under 100 meters, literally a pocket sniper rifle. But if you want to go for body shot, it can't deliver. That's just it. For the setup, all you can do to this weapon is putting on some sights. There's literally no attachments. So I'd go for a red dot and then make sure to put the Raven Forex on the weapon as well, since the weapon is really capable in long range. And there goes the setup. At number 9, we've got the M93R. This weapon, in my opinion, is the overall worst secondary weapon in the game. It lacks fire rate. Like, it drives me crazy every time I start shooting someone, even though it's a freaking burst fire weapon. It still lacks. The TTK is 476 milliseconds, which is a huge leap from the M44. But again, the combination of a ridiculously low fire rate and a broken damage model is holding this weapon back big time. For the setup, I wouldn't be able to make it any better. If you can deal with the Warhawk Compensator blocking your iron sight, then go ahead and use that to lower the recoil just a bit, and that's it. Next up, and at number 8, we've got the MP443, which is a vault weapon. And you might say, well, it's just another one of those vault weapons, and it's okay to be weak. But believe me, you should never underestimate this. This one. The TTK is 444.3 milliseconds and you might think to yourself, well, how is this even better than the M93R? Well, this one is single fire and its TTK is even better than a burst fire weapon. That's what you should keep in mind. Unfortunately, the MP443 is a vault weapon after all and in terms of attachments, there's nothing special you can use. If you think getting your iron sight blocked just a bit is fine, then go ahead and use it and there's no more option for this weapon. And here's the setup. At number 7, we've got the PF-51. For this weapon and this weapon only, we have a full auto TTK, which is 423.3 milliseconds. And the reason for that is because, well, this weapon is a full auto submachine gun, really. You can't even call it a machine pistol. The thing literally uses the same magazine as the P90 with 50 bullets per mag. Every single time you switch to your secondary, you have an SMG. And this is especially good for snipers and the MR players because they really lack in close range. Anyway, for the setup, I'd go with a Warhawk Compensator for some recoil control because the recoil can sometimes suck then go for ls1 laser sights so you can have some more hipfire accuracy as well for ammo the best ttk is provided by the subsonic rounds they also give you better damage per distance so they should be your priority then use standard issue lastly a red dot side of choice should be fine and there goes the setup and before i forget if you guys are watching this video and you enjoy it if you'd like to see more guys like this one news around battlefield franchise and other fps games this is definitely the place for you so do make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on the future videos at number six you might not like to hear this but we've got the g57 yes one of the weapons that people consider as top three is not even in the top five when it comes to ttk this video is full of surprises guys and there's still more to come the ttk for the g57 is 416 milliseconds and that's burst fire ttk and this weapon's superpower is exactly this having the ability to go burst fire and i have to be honest the firepower is perfect it's just not the fastest killing secondary weapon out there and that's fine it doesn't mean it's bad or anything it's just the ranking for the setup i always go with the arc tactical muzzle break i just think it works better than the champion muzzle break if you think the recoil hurts maybe go for the warhawk compensator as well it's on you really but my choice is arcom then go for the ls1 laser sight for some more hipfire accuracy for ammo close combat drum close combat extended and then subsonic should be fine and all you need now is a red dot sight so enjoy the setup at number five we've got the inline cz this weapon is the last pistol that will ever make its way to battlefield 2042 and considering that there is still quite a lot of weapons better than this one in terms of ttk that number is 401 milliseconds which isn't much but there's one more important thing that you guys need to know about this pistol it's very accurate and it has a high rate of fire which means you can just spam the enemy with those close combat rounds for the setup i'd go for tactical compensator for some more accuracy the recoil is great and will remain great even with this attachment on then go for the ls1 laser sight to further that hip fire accuracy for ammo, close combat and subsonic are exactly the same in terms of TTK. 
but close combat just gives you more fire rates and more rounds per max so go for close combat first then subsonic and lastly put on the red dot sight and have fun with the weapon at number four we've got two weapons having the exact same ttk the mp28 and the nbk p125 the ttk for both weapons is 356 milliseconds which is a decent upgrade from the g57 and lncz let's talk about the mp28 first for some weird reason the hipfire on this thing is amazing i don't really even aim when i try to play with this weapon even in medium range and the fire rate on the other hand is perfect Perfect. All that makes it a reliable secondary for both close and medium range. And for the setup, I'd like to run a Warhawk Compensator with a laser sight for better hip fire accuracy. For ammo, go for standard issue drum, then standard extended, and then subsonic. And for weapon sights, I prefer a Fusion Hollow and a TV2X for medium range. And there goes the setup. Now, the NVK P125, this thing is like the MP28, but twice as good. Fast fire rate, I would say little to no recoil, insane hip fire accuracy, and I mean in freaking safe. Unbelievable. There is really nothing bad I can think of about this weapon and you even get a burst fire mode as well i don't recommend using it however since the ttk of the single fire is way better and that's 356 milliseconds as mentioned before for the setup since you don't really need to be worried about accuracy in a secondary weapon because well the effective range is already short i'd go with warhawk compensator to lower that recoil then ls1 laser sight to make the hip fire even better the best ttk is provided by standard rounds so standard issue first and then subsonic rounds should do the trick now all you need to do is putting on a red dot sight and this thing is ready to kick some ass. At number three, here's where things get interesting. We've got the M1911. Yes, a vault weapon from a century ago is still considered top three in Battlefield 2042. I never thought it would make it this far. I mean, I knew it's a pretty strong and underrated weapon, but top three, it was really a surprise for me. The only personal issue I have with this thing is the hipfire accuracy, which is just ridiculously bad. But if you manage to aim down sights with it, then you're in business. Oh, and the TTK is 333 milliseconds, by the way. For the setup, well, there is no such thing. You literally don't have a choice when it comes to attachments just remember to equip the extended mag and that's it at number two we've got yet another surprise and guess what it's the almighty mp412 rex the russian revolver that somehow made its way from bf3 to bf4 and from there all the way to battlefield 2042 to be still despite being relatively old the second best sidearm in the game and there should be literally no one denying how capable this weapon really is the ttk is 222 milliseconds and it's got high damage one shot headshot in under 50 meters fire rate is on point and what else would someone want but the setup it's just the same as m1911 and you don't get to choose a thing so just completely forget about it and finally at number one the most anticipated number one of all time i guess the bfp50 also known as the deagle well it's like a magnum 44 turned into a pistol crazy fire rate big rounds big recoil and more importantly high damage i mean the package isn't even lacking it just gives you the best you can expect to get from a sidearm and the ttk is 201 milliseconds for the setup i'd go with the ls1 laser sight for better hip fire accuracy then there's ammo and you should be picking the close combat first and then the high power because well close combat gives you a faster ttk lastly all you need is a red dot sight and have fun with the most powerful secondary weapon in the game so here we are We've ranked all the secondary weapons in Battlefield 2042 based on their TTK. For some reason, you guys were really waiting for this one, and it turns out that the whole ranking was quite unexpected, to say the least. Maybe I do the same for tactical weapons, but that might as well be impossible, because we've got shotguns there and, like, sniper rifles as well, which makes it impossible to get a range where all the weapons are treated equally. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But thanks for watching, and until next time, guys, stay cool.